Hello, this is Michelle McPhee here today, and we are going to talk about how to prepare cabbage. And I have a green cabbage right here. Um, when you get a cabbage, and you know, oftentimes it's wrapped in plastic wrap, just take it off and then examine your cabbage. Sometimes there'll be some mottled spots or some yellowing spots, some sign of age. You're really, your cabbage is fine. You can just go ahead and peel back those layers. As I'm looking at the cabbage today, I'm not seeing any of those spots, but I am seeing that there's maybe a, the outer leaves are a little wilted. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll those outer pieces back and I will just discard those pieces. So now I've got my cabbage and when I turn it down here, I see there's a core. Now the core is kind of cone shaped, like picture an ice cream cone setting it down here and it comes up here. So I wanna be, just be aware of that as I'm cutting the cabbage. I'm going to show you several ways to cut cabbage today, some ideas for how to use it. And then I'm going to share with you our favorite recipe for serving uh, cabbage as a hot side dish, which is sauteed cabbage. So we're gonna take the cabbage. Right now I'm going to look at that core and I'm going to slice down alongside the core. I didn't cut really too far into the core so we still have that cone in there. I don't wanna use that core because it's really hard. Now we have a nice flat surface that we can begin slicing. And I'm currently just going to do some thin slices. That's how we're going to do our sauteed cabbage today is just these thin slices and I try to make them as not super paper thin when I'm sauteing. Sometimes if I want to use it in place of lettuce like in a taco then I might do it super thin or if I'm using red cabbage I want to do it super thin and then cut it sideways and add it to a salad. That's really nice too. So I've cut some of this today. If I were to make this dish for my family, family of 10, I would be using more than just a head of cabbage. But today we're just doing a small amount for you to see, maybe for one, maybe two people, depends on how much cabbage you want. And I just slice that in half so that I'm using more bite-sized pieces. So that's, that's what we'll be cooking up today in our sauteed cabbage. Some other ways that I use cabbage is I cut it really finely, just like we did a few minutes ago. But then I take it and I cut the other way, extremely fine, so that I just have bit pieces. And this I will put in a bowl with maybe some onion minced very fine like this, maybe a little jalapeno, some cilantro. Sometimes I do a little tiny bits of cubed cucumber. I could add bits of tomato and some lime juice and some salt. And now I've created a cabbage pico de gallo, which is awesome with tacos or any sort of Mexican food. Also, I might take these shreds and then do them a little bit bigger and add them to my vegetable soup. Or I might do them a little bit smaller and add them to potato soup, uh, split pea soup. I even like to add it to tortilla soup. Not a lot of cabbage, but just getting a little bit in there. And then this little wedge, this is a great way to be cutting cabbage if you're going to steam it or boil it. Uh, getting a pot, a saucer, and putting several of these wedges uh, up like this, little bit of water, cover it, and you can steam it for a few minutes until you insert a knife and it comes out easily. Sometimes you don't need the head of, whole head of cabbage, like if I'm just adding a red cabbage to a salad or, or doing these little bits for soup or for um, uh, cabbage pico de gallo. And so you can just wrap this back, uh, put a bag around it and put it in your refrigerator. Now the edge here, that is exposed and has been cut will most likely turn a little bit brown or gray. And when that happens and you're ready to prepare your cabbage for next time, just go ahead and do that. Slice, discard that, and now you're ready 
to work on another section of your cabbage to prepare your cabbage. So this is a long lasting vegetable and we'll keep in the refrigerator for a long time. Now we're ready to get on to sauteing our cabbage and I have here different kinds of pans. Sometimes I use a non-stick pan. Um, when I'm doing it for our family, I'll use a big heavy pan like this and because it, the cabbage is going to be very bulky when we put it in there and then it's going to shrink down. So I, I need a lot of room. And if I'm doing a stir fry already that I'm doing other vegetables, maybe onions and celery and all those kind of things, then I'm adding cabbage towards the last. It doesn't take much time to cook. And so I need a big pan like this. For today, since we're just doing a small amount of cabbage, I'm going to use my electric skillet, or not my electric skillet, my cast iron skillet. It's a um, so I'm going to go and heat this over on the stove. So the cast iron skillet has been heating, so now I'm going to add some butter. And this is not very much butter. It's probably less than a teaspoon, but I'm not making very much cabbage. If I was doing this for fa our family of 10, oh, I might use a tablespoon. Mm, maybe two tablespoons, but I don't need very much. My butter is softening, so it's kind of sticking. So we'll just go ahead and let that be melting. I just kind of want to get it on the surface of the pan. I could go with some more butter because as you see the bottom of the pan is not fully covered but what I want is just enough for a little bit of flavor. I don't want to put a lot of uh, calories in here so you decide what this meal is going to be for you but I, I like to go a little bit light. Now that that's melted I'm going to go ahead and add my cabbage. You can hear just a light sizzle, spreading that out, and then I'm going to salt this, because that's going to help, and uh, my salt shaker's almost empty, so that was uh, not very much salt actually going on there, but that's going to start help drawing the moisture out of the cabbage, and we're just going to... Um, let that cook, giving it a stir a little bit. I don't want it to get browned on the bottom. And if I was doing red cabbage, I would especially want to stir it. It seems like it's got more sugar content in it. And so you want to stir that a little more frequently. I've noticed a couple spots that are lightly brown, but that's not going to be a problem. And I might just turn down the heat a little bit. I had medium heat here. You can already see the cabbage is wilting. It's losing its, uh, I don't know, stiffness. It's, uh, it's cooking here. It's getting more and more limp, taking up less space in our pan. And I would rather use less salt at the stove and add salt than get too much at this point and then be sorry later on. Okay, my cabbage is looking about done for my taste. It's still uh, pretty green. It's going to be crunchy at this point. Uh, you can cook it as long as you want, but I think my cabbage is just about done. Of course, if you're doing more, it's going to take longer than this, just because you've got more cabbage to cook down. And, uh, but I think that is right about how I want it right there. Still has that lovely green color. So now it's time to dish up the cabbage. You can see it really reduced to a small amount. Still, I'm going to put it on two plates. I'm hoping to get someone to join me for this. I will. All right, great, Stephen. All right, I've got a couple of forks here. There you go. Go ahead and taste it and tell me what you think, Stephen. Hmm. Still got some good crunch. That's really good. Nice green color. Uh, salt. I don't need any more salt, do you? No, it's really good. Yeah, so you always want to start with a small amount of salt and slightly taste that butter flavor in there. It's really good. This is a great way to serve cabbage, our family's favorite. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe for more. <laughs>